it's a good day to talk to our man Teddy Kegstat. Folks, you can check out Teddy's Tiger Forex report under the newsletter page at tfnn.com. It comes with a great webinar Teddy did. You get it for a month, $97. You don't like it, you cancel it. I'm telling you, you'll get an education during those 30 days no matter what. Teddy Kegstad, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Boy, uh, it's always a good day when we got you on Wednesdays because we got some economic data coming down the line. But Thursdays works as well, man, because we got the ADP number. And uh, what's your general take on the, the action that we have going on so far? Um, well, I think it's just the market doing what the market always does. It does what it wants to do. Nothing can control the market. It can only influence the market. And when you look at the data that's been coming out, Everything that the Fed's really been saying from their narrative is not really going the way they want it to. So that means they're going to keep on being hawkish. You know, there's every reason, you know, we've been talking about how economic numbers are going to mean a lot over where we're in the time period that we are in now. OK, now, if you look at them, yes, inflation seems to be cooling off as far as the, at the rate of acceleration, but it's still growing and it's still there. It's just not as fast as it was. OK, so that's something that the media is saying, oh, the Fed's getting what they want. But the Fed also wants to bring on a recession, even though we're already in one. And they want to do it by having job losses and a retraction in, in the business world. OK, that's not happening right now. That doesn't fit their narrative, at least totally. You know, I heard your discussion earlier about the Amazon versus small businesses, which is a truly key point. And that's something. So in, in some ways, they're getting what they want, but they're not getting everything they want by the data. And I think that the market, no matter what, is going by, well, if the Fed's, the Fed's doing what they're doing because they want to do it. The market's going to dictate what really happens, though. And pricing is showing that it doesn't matter what they want to do. The dollar is getting stronger because of weakness in other currencies, not so much because of the economic data or what the Fed is doing. But the Fed is helping to support that trend, meaning that the bond market, remember we were saying like, if did the market really turn? Did the dollar already turn? That would mean that right now we were in a corrective phase as far as strength. I don't think that's the case. I think if you look at the 30 year and the 10 year, especially the spread by the way they trade, typically the 10 year and the, and the bonds are about basically two to one ratio. But when you see the bonds accelerating to the upside or the downside and the spread differential being about a three to one ratio as far as movement, that really shows you what is driving the market, okay? Short-term interest rates drive the interest rate market in the short run, obviously, but they don't dictate it in the long run. And when you have that kind of volatility push and momentum by the 30 year, which is not as heavily traded as the shorter terms, that should tells me that the market wants to be have higher yields, lower bond prices, and a higher dollar. Okay, so and it doesn't matter what the Fed do, the, what the Fed is doing right now is helping to support that by their narrative. Okay, it doesn't mean that their narrative is right and that's going to do is going to bring on the results that they want, but the market is supporting that right now. And I think you can see by the way that the U.S. dollar traded this week. You know, we, on Tuesday it looked like. The dollar was going to be weak, you know, and then yesterday, obviously, or excuse me, it was going to be stronger. Then yesterday, it looked like, okay, the holidays are over. We're not just algo trading. You know, the economy, the economy is getting, going the way the Fed wants it. We're going to see the dollar start to fall, fall down. Well, the reality is that's not what's happening. You can see it by today, like the pound is leaning on new daily lows. You know, the euro is almost there. You have an acceleration of the U.S. dollar yen, you know. So the, once again, if the dollar has topped, you know, then this was only a corrective move. But I think that we're showing right now that it's not a correction and the real overall trend is coming back going into 2023, meaning that we're going to have a, a stronger dollar for the next few months. Yeah, right as we climb above 105, man, on that dollar index, I was jumping around to the euro and the yen as you pulled it up as well. Um, pretty interesting. We're back above Tuesday's high after that pullback in the dollar yesterday on volatility in both directions. And it would kind of make sense part of what I mean you and I have been talking about when you're coming on a weekly basis that the data has got to get there man and no matter what the Fed is saying I find it so interesting that the market seems to continually every time the Fed gives even the pause that the data may be lining up and yes that's exactly it and we talked about this already a couple of weeks ago that into the first quarter and also the, the right now the, the the Fed is doing what they're doing not because they want to uh, we talked a couple of weeks ago about this that into the first quarter they're gonna still remain on this hawkish thing they're not just gonna go from this strong stance to we're neutral you know they're gonna ease off it now we did say that you know they're not gonna raise at the rate that they were doing just like inflation isn't running at the absolute high rate that it was doing but it doesn't mean that they're gonna stop doing it okay 
And it's not about defending the dollar. It's about fitting their narrative. And because these data points that we can't just look at the major ones saying these are slowing, inflation slowing, there's other things that are not supporting their things, meaning they want job reduction. They want to they want to bring on a recession until they get the data point quote unquote, this isn't a recession. You know, I mean, everyone out there will tell you you're in a recession. And anyone that loses their job right now in an inflationary environment, that's not good for them. You know, so nobody really likes what the Fed's doing, you know, but they're going to keep doing it at least for the next few months. And that's going to be supporting the dollar as well against these other currencies. Nice. Would you mind hanging to the break? Because I wanted sure. to get you gave quite a recap of things that could happen. Um, big picture and we're going to take a break but would you mind going over for some of the listeners yeah. because um yeah. i was talking to my dad over the holidays about what you were potentially saying could come down the line and if it's okay i want to go through some of that after the break does that sure. work absolutely okay for sure. folks we're going to come back yeah. teddy's going to talk about some of the big picture things as we come into 2023 we have markets and negative prices we got the dollar up about 69 ticks at 104.94 stay tuned folks we got everything working again we'll be right back after the break Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps down about 45 points. That's off about 1.1%, trading at 3830. We're talking to our man, Teddy Kegstad. And so, Teddy, man, you gave us such a great roundup of things, and you don't have to go through it all. But for those didn't listen, that weren't listening, um, there was some interesting, and that's, that's the word of the hour, we'll call it, interesting things you were talking about coming into this year. Um, if you could just give them a little teaser, whether you're talking about, you know, what could play out, but where those kind of drive some of the things, whether it was, I remember gold we were talking about on there, some sure. yields, markets, go for it. Okay, well, definitely, um, I said uh, the Swiss and gold were definitely long-term plays. Um, Short-term, I would not say buy the Swiss because I do think the dollar is going to be strong going into, in this first quarter. Um, but I would look in the overall long term for the Swiss to be a buy over the next year and a half to two years. I think that trend is definitely going to um, arise. And the same, th same thing with gold. Um, as we, you got to realize this whole narrative of the Fed destroying uh, jobs to bring us into a recession. If you think about it. Under the time period that we're in, this couldn't be the – I mean, if you want to talk about really beating up America, you're really picking the right time to do it. You know, I mean, no one alive right now has lived during the Great Depression that happened back in the last century. They were born and grew up in the post era, but they didn't go through the Depression. And right now, the way you got to look at things is that – we're coming into a, pot a potential of reliving the 1930s again, you know, and especially with bringing on your creating unemployment by design. Now, creating unemployment by design in a heavy inflationary environment really puts a lot of stress on the people, no matter what country you're sure. talking about. OK, and if this is I mean, it, they're not coming out and saying that this is what we want to hurt people. But by the what they're doing is exactly what they're saying. We want to bring on a recession. Now, it, it, that does not that's really not how you go about fixing an economy. Recessions happen naturally. You don't cause them by design. OK, and I think really what you have here is the debt market is so inflated because we printed so much money that right now. They're, they're pushing the bond market, but then they have, in, they have to make a choice. Do you want the bond market to explode or do you want the dollar to implode? You know, And I think that that's what's going to happen is they're pushing this hawkishness for the next first, first next three to six months. And then what's going to happen is they're going to start to lay back. And that's when they're going to let the dollar collapse to eat up you know, this problem with the bond market. And it's not good I for like stocks. I like the talk, it's man. Good for, it's good for gold. Buy the Swiss. And Bitcoin, too. Switzerland has one uh, community now that accepts Bitcoin and all the...